Hello, my name is Joseph Barreto from Banjim, Goa, India. As all my oral and written complaints for the past 20 years are ignored, I hope this video of my experience with the Department of Agriculture, Government of Goa will change the poor governance in agriculture. My love for nature drifted into pioneering a number of ecotourism projects in the non-glamorous hinterlands of Goa about 35 years back. I am involved in the old practice of integrated farming, which today has a glorified word permaculture. Farmers and landlords interested in permaculture will give a rough idea how to go about to avail some government schemes. About 16% of Goans among 58% of Indians are involved in agriculture. Hence, to boost, tourism, to boost agriculture in Goa, both the state and central government implemented schemes with subsidies to encourage goans. Without subsidies, it is uneconomical to indulge in agriculture. The most important requirement in agriculture is land, water, electricity, and labor. I got electricity after five years and Polly House was approved over four years back, but influential people who applied after me are given benefits. My testimony is in support with documentary evidence and I do not point fingers to any individual, government staff, politicians or political parties, but to the Stone Age system and some officers who pass on the buck from one to another. Maximum benefit is given to selected family or friends of some politicians and concerned government department staff. And uninfluential people and marginal farmers will get frustrated of the complicated time-consuming process to avail the schemes. I applied under RTI to give me date-wise information, but the reply is given in a haphazard manner, perhaps to confuse the reader. It proves that subsidy are given Two, people not on first come and first serve basis. Question, why? Animal husbandry, fisheries, forestry, beekeeping, farming activities are also a subject of agriculture. But the government does not work under one umbrella. I had to work hard to research on schemes, single window information would help the farmer. To prove my allegation of poor governance, I must tell you a bit of my history. Jungle Book, an agro-tourism project next to Dudsagar waterfall was purchased in 2001. I traveled 30 kilometers to the Zonal Agricultural Office, or it's known as the ZEO, in Sangem, seven times. As the ZEO was never in his office and the staff incompetent to give me technical advice, on 15-5-2003, I wrote to him asking his help and received no reply. RTI didn't exist then. When I finally met 
Mr. R.D., I told him that I was lucky to meet him on my seventh visit. In self-defense, he shouted and questioned me the date and time I visited his office. I told him to chill and reminded him that he is a government servant to serve farmers and not shouts. He sarcastically replied, Oh, so you want my assistance to develop your property? I did not get any and undertook agriculture at Jungle Book in a traditional manner with the knowledge I gained as I developed agro-tourism at Pascual, Sarkari and Tropical Plantation all in Ponda. Many officers make it appear as though money for subsidies is given from their pockets and some farmers beg for it. In 2007, I purchased another property rich in minerals at Darbandara. A lot of miners approached me, but as I did not want to rape Mother Nature, and as I intended to develop it as an integrated farming ecosystem, I approached the ZEO Darbandara and the ICR at Old Goa and again, both did not help. Perhaps they didn't, as I do not worship any government servant and offer bakshish. As the ZEO was not cooperating, I wrote to the dynamic Chief Minister of Goa, Mr. Manohar Parikar, his officer, called me uh, to his residence. After a brief meeting with the CM, he directed his staff to look into my grievance. They read my complaint and enclosed evidence that proved my allegation of harassment. They liked my suggestions, wherein the ZDO staff must go to the fields on bikes the way veterinarians and bit police and today 108 go instead of farmers coming to their office as that would save valuable farming time and money. Subsidies for multi-layer cropping, replacement of traditional staff with scientific ones permit farmers to first invest and then apply for subsidies, etc. were discussed. Few days later, a miracle took place. All my pending applications were approved. This itself proves my allegation and I fail to understand why does a farmer require political influence to exercise his fundamental rights to obtain agricultural subsidies. Years went by and I did not ask for government help. But as I paid huge taxes and as my agro-tourism income, which paid for all my agricultural losses stopped on account of the pandemic, I applied and basic approvals like land leveling, irrigation, water pond, polylining, nursery, etc. are not yet approved for over six months. I asked the ZDO who told me to ask the head office. The head office in turn sends me back to him. And as I had to go from pillar to post, I applied under RTOI and that angered the ZDO and the entire office is now hostile. Perhaps as I am the first farmer who did not beg but demanded 
my fundamental rights. This must be the first video exposing the poor agricultural governance. Ask yourself, why only good news and videos in agriculture is heard of? As the CM is a farmer, I thought he would implement changes in the governance of agriculture. So I emailed him and suggested additional points over and above those I suggested to Mr. Parikar. The Fisheries and Animal Husbandry Department also have schemes in farming cows, goats, pigs, chicken, and as they know that farming animals is not worth without government subsidies, these schemes are implemented. To be eligible for these schemes, farmers must attend training. After this training, I applied and complained to the CM by email as the government of those departments was also pathetic. How come approvals are given to community dairies and other animal farming activities to selected people? My next video will explain the animal husbandry fisheries and other department schemes. So if you want to see them, please like and subscribe my channel. 99% of my income is to foreign tourism and I don't know when it will restart. As my staff were jobless, I offered them an opportunity to become my business partners. I converted my restaurant to animal and poultry sheds, water tanks into bioflock fish farming, rooms to make value added agricultural produce and garden to grow vegetable at my expense and the money earned to be shared. Now, if anyone is interested in this offer, please contact me. I approach some state and central governments such as ICAR, KVK, NHM, Atma, the Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, Khadi, Forest, Goa Biodiversity Board, and they are and there are many others that I need to approach. All were helpful. Some even came to the site and inspected the property. And a scientist at the ICR advised me the type of plants suitable to be grown in indirect sunlight. The quickest result I got it was in a day by Goa Diversity Board. Totally digital. Their working was like that in a developed country. I have the authority to say so as I have been to 55 countries and with my family who lives in Holland, I visited the best of the best technically advanced farm and institute in the world. Last year, the director of agriculture instructed the ZEO and others to help me. They helped, but I think that they cannot do much as they follow the stone age practice of governance. And I am frustrated. I can be selfish and use political influence to get my job done. But in public interest, I am interested in the change of governance. I might file a PIL or a public interest litigation, but first I must dig into the graves for additional proof of the misappropriation of public money allocated to agriculture.
Does one really check what is done with the money sanctioned by the central government? It is sad that the legal system is also frustrating as such. I also emailed to the Honorable Supreme Court and others to streamline some e legal issues. If any farmer wants to avail government schemes, I humbly request you to follow the below steps so that you don't face problems I did. Purchase or rent a property for minimum 10 years. Subsidy is given for a maximum area of 50,000 square meters only. Thereafter, apply and get a Krishi card. This is your passport into agriculture. For details of schemes, study the state and central government website as I'll tell you only the basics. Once you know what flora, fauna and every fauna you want to integrate your farm with, personally go and introduce yourself to the concerned government department staff and traditionally worship them the way I did as that is what how the system works. <coughs> On eight, on I sent an email to the Honorable Chief Minister requesting him to provide poor farmers and all government servants smartphones with access to WhatsApp and through GPS to monitor their movement as many times Outdoor staff give excuses that they are out on field jobs, but in reality, they might be at home, doctor's visits, or picnics. An official ZEDIO WhatsApp group is existing, but why is it a one-way communication? My request to the Department of Agriculture Animal Husbandry fisheries to have an interactive farmers digital group is ignored. The ICR has an interactive WhatsApp group, namely coastal poultry farming. Farmers share knowledge and experience and scientists reply suggesting treatment on poultry digitally. As most of the young government staff are learned and cyber literate people, e-governance must be urgently implemented. As of now, only the heads of departments have emails. I email to the chief minister to, con to connect all government staff with an email address so all internal and external communication should be by email which is faster and saves trees if the honorable prime minister of india embraced technology at the age of 70 i fail to understand why learned government staff can't i sent another email to the Honorable Chief Minister of Goa requesting him to educate all government staff and politicians IT. If they cannot learn, they should be sacked. I strongly recommend that farmers must undergo a hands-on training of the subject they want to farm. Google and WhatsApp or YouTube, employ, skill labor, and be willing to dirty your hands as someday you will have to give in a helping hand. Don't depend on labor. Plan big, but start small. 
and don't depend on government support. Plan your finances and design your land even if it is very small. Test your soil and ask experts like the ZEO or scientists to suggest crops suitable to your land. Most people will advise you to cut trees, level the land and undertake agriculture in direct sunlight. I did not ax my trees. I pruned them and to grow pepper, vanilla, orchids, vines on them. And under the canopy of the trees, I in, will intercrop them and grow crops that can grow in indirect sunlight, such as turmeric, ginger, nutmeg, banana, haliconias, anthuriums, etc. This will be a real challenge to prove to the ZEO in getting subsidies for crops and irrigation. As although they are highly qualified agronomists and know that it is possible to do what I am planning to do, they might not be able to release subsidies as the SOP for crop spacing and, and irrigation was chalked as per the traditional practice of agriculture years back. I will have to fight for a change in the system. Apply for required NOC to the Panchayat before investing. If town and plan, country planning permission is required, please do not invest before getting permissions as they might reject for reasons better known to them. Apply to the ZEO for electrical fencing your property. If you have wild animals, use six feet high chain link electrical fencing. If you have monkeys, grow plants, they do not eat. The forest department should give further subsidies to increase the height of fencing as animals easily jump over six feet electric fence and destroy crop the way they destroyed my plantation. I complained to the ZEO and forest who did nothing. When you apply for a scheme, you must sign about 10 forms, some which have to be signed after getting paid. I received backdated letters of approvals, so please keep your envelopes of postage that proves the date. Last year, I applied and received subsidies for pineapples. I failed to understand why the ZEO asked me to resubmit another set of applications for the second part of the subsidies as they have proof of last year. This repetition of paperwork is harassment to farmers. Apply for assistance for bush cuttings. Please take pictures of your property with you in it in the background before and after bush cutting, which might take months. If you want to level your land, take pictures of the level you want in the background before and after leveling. Don't know why the ZEO insists in the expensive engineer's report as their engineers have to certify it anyway. Water is the lifeline to all living beings. The pump should have sufficient head and pressure to deliver water depending on your irrigation system. I got my irrigation system designed free of cost by Jane Irrigation as I bought their system. 
my complaint to the boss was ignored as one of the engineers cheated me. So beware of chain. Phenolex is expensive, but good. It does not matter which company you buy your irrigation. So find a good dealer nearest to you as long as the supply and his product is registered with the department. Before putting the pump in the well and closing the trenches of the pipe, don't forget to take photos of it with you and the label in it. If you have a river, apply to the irrigation department to drain water from the river. If not, apply for digging of the well or a bore well, which is an expensive scam. Do not grow any plants before getting the approvals. Complete the irrigation system. Let the project delay, but do not start without water. I did not wait for the approval and grew plants. It's foolish on the part of the department to approve growing of my plants without approving the irrigation system. A lot of tools, machinery and implements can be purchased through schemes. This process is very slow and complicated. First, you must get a quotation from the shop registered with the agricultural department only. But even if that item is not registered with the department, you won't get the approval. As approvals take time, shop owners tell you to buy it and after approval claim subsidies. Some of my applications are rejected on grounds that the items which were not registered with the department, although the shop was. The second time, you must personally go to collect the approvals or wait for a backdated approval by post that might take ages. The third time after purchasing to produce the bill to the person. The fourth time to get a number that you must paint on the item and take a picture of it with the writing with you in the background. I don't know why all this was required as the fifth time the ZDO comes to inspect the item and takes a picture of it with the writing with you in the background on their phone which is installed with an application that shows the GPS location and the place the item will be used. Today we are in the 21st century digital world and many items are available cheaper at huge stores like IKEA, Farmers Mart and on digital platforms like Amazon, Flipkart, etc. I fail to understand why a farmer should purchase items only from those registered with the Department of Agriculture. Why should suppliers, why should supply and installation of pumps conveying pipeline and irrigation system and solar fencing be contracted only with registered dealers. Why should a simple job of joining pipes and solar fencing not be permitted to be installed by farmer who can do it themselves at a cheaper price? There are people who can bow wells at half the cost charged by a registered bow well supply. Why should it be contracted only to them? The department comes and inspects the work anyway. And if it's wrongly done, they have the right to disapprove the work. If a farmer has the capacity to graft plants and sow saplings, 
or purchase them cheaper from anywhere in India, why is he given subsidies only if purchased from registered nurseries? Is this a scam? Is there a possibility of a kickback in this arrangements? I can go on and on this subject, but this information is sufficient, indeed more than sufficient, to prove my point of poor governance. My advice to new farmers is do not rush because of the monsoons, as you have many, many more monsoons to come. Rome was not built in a day. Please grow flowers and fruit bearing trees anywhere, even in government properties, as the government is of, by, and for the people anyway. The trees you grow will arrest carbon and feed wildlife. Happy farming.